Alright, I've been getting a lot of requests for tutorials to build the three new multi-block structures for reactor craft. This being the, uh, the turbine generator, the RF generator, the turbine flywheel, and the high-pressure turbine. These are newer than the, than the other multi-blocks that were added with the fusion reactor, and as such they weren't in its video. And so as a result, aside from a few images and one Reddit thread, there isn't really much information on how to build those multi-blocks, and so a lot of people are kind of lost. So I'm going to uh, show you how to build those three structures here. So let's get started. We've got a standard, you know, low-pressure turbine, which is what we're going to use to drive the, uh, the turbine generator. You can also do it off a high-pressure turbine, doesn't really matter. But we're going to use a low-pressure turbine because it's easier for now. So you can see it's generating power. Now let the steam go, it doesn't really matter. Um, 1.7 seems to have fixed that flickering bug. Of course, as soon as I say that, it's going to, it's going to immediately happen. Okay. So that's that's what happens now. It doesn't flicker anymore, it just stops rotating. Alright. Let's make the steam go away for now. Anyway, so let's assemble the multi-block. So what we need are well, various components, obviously. So what we're going to need for this is the actual tile into the block, and then wherever it might be. Generator rotor cores, generator rotor windings, housings, steam bypasses, and that's it. Okay, so you're gonna need is then nine of these. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the tile anti block. You have to be facing towards the turbine when you place it that way. The output is facing this way. And then what you do, you put two blocks deep, one layer around a steam bypass, and then an additional one on top like this. You continue the two, uh, the one around pattern with the windings just all the way down the length, except for where the generator block is. And then you build the housing. So with the housing you do, you build outwards another layer, same sort of pattern, obviously going around the seam bypass exit here. I don't offhand know the cost of this structure. I do know, though, that it costs exactly 1279 gold. This because someone actually went to calculate it and posted it on my thread, and that's the only number I remember. I'm guessing it's probably a similar amount of steel, though. Anyway, so what you want to do is then build an end cap here, like this, all the way around. And then you want to fill in the corners up here with two blocks deep, just making it square. And two more. And then what you need to do, you'll notice it didn't complete. The reason for that is because this, uh, let's break this turbine block, this generator rotor core piece has to be placed last, and that's there for technical reasons, that's not going to change. So a good way to do it is just, you know, break and replace, and now, there we go. That is the turbine generator. So I'll hook it back up, pop the turbine back on, steam supplies on. block type. Concrete doesn't matter. This is a visual bug caused by all the leaking steam. It'll fix itself in a minute, probably. Even if it doesn't, though, it's okay. Because you can see this thing is generating power. Use the transducer on it. It's generating 40k RF a tick and rising as the turbine accelerates. It's approaching two-thirds speed now. So the dimensions of this thing are 5 wide, 5 high, and uh, 10 long. So it's, it's not a small structure, it dwarfs the turbine it's hooked up to. But it's probably well worth its cost in space. Anyways... And there we go. The torque input's still going up a little bit, but speed's maxed out now. When this thing crosses the 950 megawatt barrier, chances are you're going to see around 165k RF a tick, something like that, coming off this generator. Alright, so we'll build the flywheel now. This only works for the low pressure turbine. It's only needed for the low pressure turbine. So the high pressure turbine is pretty stable with its power output if you give it enough steam. So what the turbine flywheel does, as you might guess, is it basically stabilizes the power output of the, flywheel, of the uh, turbine. 
because as you'll see if I put down a dynamometer, the power output of this turbine it hasn't reached its maximum yet. But the power output of the turbine has to vary rather strongly. It goes up to about 950 megawatts and drops back down to you know 840, 870, somewhere in that range, and gradually climbs again and then drops and climbs and drops and climbs and drops. And while that isn't normally a problem for a lot of builds, if you have something where you're just meeting the minimum power requirement or you're using electrocraft, it can be because well, the reasons for if you're meeting the minimum power requirement is pretty obvious. But the thing about Electrocraft is, if every time you change the power input into an Electrocraft network, it forces it to constantly uh, to re-update the entire network. With the power input changing, you know, every single tick, that means it's remapping the network every single tick, and that is not good for performance. Anyway, so let's build the, uh, the flywheel now. So you're going to need just three blocks. You need the uh, turbine flywheel frame the flywheel vibration dampeners, and the turbine flywheel core, in addition to, of course, the flywheel machine block itself. Like usual, you place that first. I'm just going to turn off the steam so we don't have steam flying everywhere. So the first standard, you know, flywheel block looks just like the, uh, the shaft core, or central core pieces, before you actually complete the flywheel. And then what you do is you build four flywheel core around like this, and then four dampeners. And then just a ring without corners of the frame. And there you go. That is the flywheel. And even though the turbine's still visually glitched out, not spinning, you can see the turbine flywheel itself is spinning just fine. And you hook it up to the dynamometer. And oh, it's because the turbine's spinning down. Turn the steam back on. And you'll notice this flywheel, of course, blocks the steam throughput, so you will lose your steam if you're using the flywheel. You won't get it back because, well, steam doesn't matter to get out. Let's so just let that spin up for a second. The way the flywheel works is it basically caps off the amount of torque that can go through it at the, at the speed the turbine's spinning. So the reason the turbine power output varies is because the torque goes up and down, up and down, the speed stays the same. So then if you clip off the torque, you know, clamp it to basically the lowest uh, point it normally it, it normally goes. When is it happening is you get a, a solid steady power up. But this does mean you have a loss, usually around like 12, 15 percent, something like that. So if you're really stingy with your power, this may not be the solution you want. But if you don't really care, as a lot of you probably don't if you're using reactor craft, then this is a good way to streamline you know, the performance on your network. And it also keeps your power profile a little bit more stable. So here you go. You can see now the the torque is capping out at 12,750. Right now, it's still occasionally dropping out, but as the uh, as the turbine spins up just a little more, it'll it'll pretty much lock at you know 835.584. It'll stay there, pretty much giving you a solid amount of power. You can see the the, the duration of time it's spinning, dropping down, is lower and lower and lower. Soon it'll be, be completely steady. And there we go. You can see now we're getting a solid. Well, can I say that we're getting a solid 12,750. Uh, newton meters of torque and 65,000 radians a second. And just to show, this is what the uh, turbine flywheel and turbine look together when nothing is glitching out. You see they're spinning in pretty much unison, although interestingly the flywheel looks like it's spinning faster. Alright, so now we'll build the high pressure turbine. This is the hardest of the three multi blocks by a rather large margin. So, worth noting before we get started is the high pressure turbine needs a lot more steam to get started it can't run on the kind of steam that can keep a, a normal low pressure turbine running and it's not the, the, the high pressure turbine generates eight to ten times as much power as the low pressure turbine it actually takes more than that amount of steam to get started not to run it consumes steam at, a, at in fact a lesser rate than its equivalent in low pressure turbines but to get started it, it actually has a, a far higher activation level just to keep it from being used on the low pressure uh, the the small reactors this of course is just a debug design it would generate steam in the natural survival play but we're doing that now just to keep things working anyways so what we're going to need is the obviously the turbine block itself like usual and then we're going to need turbine blades, turbine housings, and steam injectors. So the first thing you're going to want to build is a ring of eight steam injectors. This is where you inject the lubricant too, for well, since the turbine needs that as well. And it goes around where the steam line will come in, so the steam line will ultimately come in here. For now, though, we're just going to leave, leave that a hole there. Filler block. So you place turbine blocks down the center. Again, there's you know blocks before you give them 
uh, the multi-block. And unlike the low-pressure turbine, the high-pressure turbine can be built to seven stages. It doesn't need to be, although it's obviously advisable. So we're going to do all seven. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, there we go. So the first one you're going to want is just a ring of turbine housing. And I did that wrong. It's not just a ring of housing. It's first four blades for housing, and then another ring of housing. And I've still done that wrong. Okay, so I've, this is in fact the, the diagram for the next stage. The stage before this is a little bit more simple. It is just... Housings. And there we go. So that's stage one. And then stage two is the one with the four turbine blades around it. And then a layer all the way around. I'm not, I don't remember if you need the corners. We'll find out in a second. If you do. And of course it's not working. There we go. And there's stage two. Stage three is a ring of blades, and then two layers out of these, and one in the corners there. And as usual, for some reason, make me replace it, and there we go, there's stage three. Stage four has, so it's five and three, and then kind of mirror that on the other side, and then repeat around, oops, and you'll notice, yes, if you break a block adjacent to a completed turbine, what ends up happening is it break it breaks the rest of it because it's it thinks you're destroying the whole thing. Anyways, let's build the rest of this, you need, basically need a layer of housing around it, one block thick all the way around, including diagonals. go, that's the next stage, stage four. Stage five is, um, what you need is another similar pattern of blades around it, in fact it's the same pattern as the previous layer. So this time around you're actually going to go too thick with the housing, so one, two, one, two, one, two, and then the corners will be two by twos. Obviously, it's a good idea not to have this thing running as you're building it, because every time it, de it deconstructs, it destroys any steam and lubricant inside it. There we go. There's the next stage. And then, what we're going to want is now three out in kind of a... Well, basically, the closest approximation to a circle is you can easily build something like that. And actually, there's pieces on the corners as well, so it's reasonably rounded. And like before, what you want is one layer of housing all the way around. Almost. Break and replace, and there we go, that's stage six. And then finally stage seven, the largest stage. Four in each cardinal direction, and then you want three on either side. And then what you want to do is place this in the corners here, and then oops, you want to fill these corners in like this. You've got. I mean, that's not quite right. There we go. That's that's more correct. So you want a pattern that looks like that, and then you go one thick with the housing again, it's not quite it though. We'll get to that in a second. So that's 
one thick with the housing, but you also want to fill in these corners on either side, just an additional block. And then as soon as you complete the last one, oops, there we go. That's a full seven stage high pressure turbine. So I've got the steam lines, let's get rid of that filler block. And you can see this thing is spinning. And it's dropping, you know, water parts. This is how you collect the water behind it, or ammonia if you're using that. Pick up a reservoir. So. Oops. Well, makes it a little easier. Okay, this is annoying. You have to keep in mind this, or I have to keep the an eye on the individual blocks for them to cause you a hassle. But anyways, as you can see, we're collecting low pressure water in these reservoirs. A Billcraft tank will also work. Basically, anything that has an open top, which only the Billcraft tank and the Billcraft reservoir do, as far as I know. So that's how you collect the liquid again, and it'll, of course, be low pressure ammonia if you're using that. Either way, that this is a completed setup, and you can build a turbine generator here if you want, and that's a very popular choice. I'm just going to show. Here you have a transducer. It's generating 4.8 gigawatts of power and climbing. It's going to cap out around 8.59. If you put in ammonia, it's going to generate around 12 and a half gigawatts. It doesn't give the full two times bonus because that would be rather superfluous, I think. Let's check our steam levels. See, the steam levels are dropping, although not rapidly, so it means we're using a little bit more steam than this little setup can handle, but that's okay. This wasn't designed to be sustainable. And the lubricant is going in the steam injectors, although it may not look like it. I know, it's a little strange having a pipe go into nothing. And almost there. And there we go, 8.59 gigawatts exactly. I'm not going to build a turbine generator, but you could easily do that. And there we go, so that that's... Those are the three multi-blocks, the three new multi-blocks to Reactor Craft that until now didn't have tutorials. Hopefully this will help people build them.